Welcome to the Mass Effect Hypecast. I am your host, Morgan, a.k.a. Bond Diesel, and this is a podcast about Mass Effect, the future of Bioware's premier franchise, and all of our speculation and ideas for the next game. Before we get started, subscribe to the Mass Effect Hypecast on your favorite podcast app and leave a review on Spotify or iTunes. Or... You can subscribe on the Bond Diesel YouTube channel to get all of my videos, including this podcast. Thank you to everyone who supports as a YouTube member or Twitch subscriber. If you're interested in supporting this podcast and all of my other content, check out the link in the show description. We can jump right into it. The main topic for this episode is going to be uh, kind of an in seven day 2024 summary. And probably more of a conversation about what it wasn't than what it was. Uh, They made it pretty clear, even in the days leading up to in seven day this year, uh, the Bioware official account put out a tweet saying, hey, we know in seven days coming. I'm paraphrasing. Uh, It's going to be a quieter year since we just released the game. Um, That was obviously a little disappointing uh, as someone who's been following the development or, or, you know, the pre-production of this game and kind of uh, made a whole podcast about it. Um, you know, I obviously wanted some big info, uh, but it also made sense. The explanation is sound. They just got a game out their first game in a while. Um, there's a pretty good chance that some of the people who would have been trying to arrange an N7 day this year may have been busy doing other things in the studio, um, or maybe not. Maybe they just simply wanted to stay out of the way, and that's fair, I think. Um, I watched uh, the the podcast with uh, N7 Legend, and he, you know, he had the hot take of. He was fine with this. This isn't that big of a deal. Um, It it makes sense that they may not have much to talk about. And even if they do, it makes sense for them to stay out of the way of Veilguard because the focus is going to be on them like very soon. Um, We didn't even get any Mike Gamble teases. Uh, If you have been paying attention to this stuff with me, you'll know that uh, Mike Gamble, who's one of the, I believe, the creative director on, on the upcoming game, it normally teases year round um hasn't really said much in the last year uh and was pretty quiet on in seven day um we did get a blog it started off as just a social media post um but they did eventually post it to the blog and it said hi everyone november 7th has arrived once again and as always we're grateful for the opportunity to celebrate all things mass effect This year is a little different as we just launched Dragon Age the Veilguard as a studio, so we're purposefully keeping things a little lighter as we celebrate the launch of the game. Speaking of which, did you notice a small treat from the Mass Effect team in Dragon Age the Veilguard if you check out the new chest inside the lighthouse? There is more cool new merch in our Bioware store, and we have partnered with No Man's Sky and Destiny 2 to bring back a couple of fun cross uh, promos in those games be sure to check out our social channels for all the details although we are a little quieter this year we couldn't be more excited for what is to come from the mass effect community team and and that's basically what it was uh i thought for sure maybe we would get like gamble or someone would post like oh in case you wanted to see some something new here's a concept art or something but nothing this was it um as for the other stuff uh there was some new merch uh from dark horse we got um, a new shepherd statue it's really really good i pretty much instantly pre-ordered that um and then on the bioware gear store there are some bookends um and it looks so good i think it's like garris and shepherd fighting um some uh, geth and that's the two sides uh, they're behind walls and the walls are the bookends. It, it, they're like 300 bucks though. I just don't think I can justify it. Um, but we'll, we'll see. Um, and then there's also a mass effect one Rex, uh, and it's in the, uh, the white and pink armor. So I thought that was pretty interesting that they had the idea to, um, 
you know, it's not even his like cannon armor. It's it's um, you know one of the optional armors you can wear. Um, kind of interesting to see that they'll go as far back as to give us some armor uh, from the first game. So uh, we also got a coat from Volante. Uh, you may remember they did um, coats two years ago, I believe, where they um, they had the the Turian coat with the big collar that had like the big hoop. Um, well, this one is the N7 agent coat from last year, from the 2023 trailer that we got during N7 day. Um, it was interesting because uh, if you looked at the metadata uh, and you post it like in Discord or something, the embed would actually say N7 Commander Shepherd coat or something. Um, I try not to overthink that. I obviously posted about it and like, you know, got people going about it. Um, I don't really, I would love for that to have been a big tease or some kind of confirmation of something. Um, but I don't believe it was, I should probably remember what podcast we're on. Uh, I don't believe it was. And, um, I, you know, I'm happy to do some hopium, some copium and to, uh, you know, tell myself maybe it was something and I've covered it too in that way. It's probably them just making, just making sure that product gets easily found on Google <laughs> using the SEO stuff and, uh, using all the, you know, the keywords for anything mass effect that you, uh, would want to use to get people looking at it. Uh, cause I believe some of the other coats on their website have that same, uh, meta meta, uh, kind of description as well if you embed them so uh it, it's a it's a neat jacket it looks pretty uh life uh you know pretty accurate to the one that we saw in that little trailer um, but it was also like three or five hundred dollars or something uh yeah if that's your thing go nuts not my thing we uh we did get uh the amazon show has been confirmed not a ton of details more about um like who's making it um i'm gonna be totally honest the mass effect show being made by people associated with like F fast and furious and stuff like that um you know makes it a little harder to get really excited about it um you know amazon has a pretty good track record with these types of uh adaptations uh the fallout show was awesome just recently uh we have like the boys is really really good even invincible as an animated series is, is pretty solid i'm sorry i'm yawning i guess i'm tired um the um i just man i i'm already kind of skeptical about a live action mass effect show um i would have really preferred for this to be like an animated show or something with a style almost like um edge runners from the netflix cyberpunk show or something like that um there's even if you ever go to the i think it's the mass effect um youtube channel uh for for when the legendary edition came out they released the whole soundtrack of the whole franchise and accompanying that uh is this animation that plays and it's like liara on her the mass effect 3 computer or it's uh i want to say tally and garris working at you know computers uh, or it's like the from a, the old Mass Effect 3 trailer, the little girl standing in a cornfield is like the Reapers are coming down. Um, it, it, the animation style of it is is exactly what I want a show to be. So um, I'm a little bummed that that's not what we're getting. Um, but unfortunately, that's just the way it's going to be. Uh, one of the kind of funny things that happened was, I, I can't remember if it was in seven day or the day after, um, John Cena posted uh, a Mass Effect 1 picture on his Instagram. And everyone lost their collective minds. Um, it, it was just a lot of like, oh no, not John Cena. He He's bad. Like, I don't want him in this. Um, I mean, maybe that, that's what he's signaling, that he's going to be in the show uh, somehow. Um Probably not. He's like a nerd. Like uh, if you've paid attention to his stuff in the back uh, in the past, you'll know that he's like a big dork and uh, there's a pretty good chance. He just likes mass effect. Um, but maybe not. I have no idea. But my big thing is that if you want this show to happen, if you want 
more name recognition for the N7 or the Mass Effect brand, having a guy with 20 plus million followers who's like worldwide famous talk about the thing that you like that's on that's been in kind of rough waters for a while it's a good thing i i know you may not want him in the show i don't particularly want him either uh but just the brand getting that kind of attention from someone like him is that is a big deal and, and that and that's a good thing even if it makes you worried he's gonna be in it which you know i can appreciate to a point um we also got uh, the Veil Guard crossover clothing. Uh, if you go, if you have uh, Dragon Age of the Veil Guard, um, it, when you open up the upgrade vendor that's in the, the home base, uh, there'll be a crate beside it. And it has a little note from Harding saying that uh, someone shepherded this armor to uh, the, 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 the lighthouse, the base, uh, and that uh, it seems like a familiar face um and then the armor itself is uh an n7 ish uh metal helmet in the medieval fan high fantasy aesthetic uh, as well as two different sets of armor one of them basically being the uh, 2023 n7 agent armor um it looks extremely similar uh obviously with the dragon age kind of uh, spin on it um this was interesting i talked about it a bit um i i haven't done a straight up video about it because i just can't find the words to really make it seem like it's worthy of its own video um but basically it's this idea that uh at least for me the significance of this here uh is that everything about this armor is referencing shepherd and that the armor is the n7 agent armor from last year maybe that means something i mean that, that's as good of a guess as i have um i, I just feel like if it was referencing shepherd they would have done armor that looked more like the kind of uh classic n7 armor from the trilogy that shepherd wore at least in two and three so i i don't know I, i'm trying not to look too much into it because you know we're, we're probably years away from knowing if it really meant anything uh but it is fun to speculate about and it only reinforces the thing that i've been saying for years at this point that every year since 2020 they've put out some kind of media that references an n7 and i believe that until they make it clear that n7 doesn't equal shepherd then it does maybe the next game will 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 we'll signify that maybe you can argue that andromeda made it clear that n7s aren't just shepherd because i know they aren't i know there's hundreds and thousands of n7s out there it's just a military rank you know but in the mass effect universe in the in the gaming franchise i would still argue that n7 equals shepherd until they prove that it doesn't so you know, if you're if you're wanting to ride the hopium vibe like I am about this armor drop, then you know maybe there's something there. Maybe there there's maybe we're getting signals, or or maybe they're just playing on nostalgia. Uh, and that was kind of the majority of it. There there was there was a few other random things, but nothing big. There was like a a soundtrack was released on vinyl and things like that. Um, so for the future, uh, what I'm kind of expecting. Um, I know for a fact that some of the developers um, are working on uh, EA Motive. Uh, they're working with them on the next Iron Man game. Um, I actually spoke to a few people uh, privately, and it was kind of this impression that uh, people are taking vacations, people are taking breaks, uh, and people are working on other studios' projects while they wait for the pre-production of Mass Effect to finish, and then they can move over to that. So uh if, if, don't go into full panic if you see you know dragon age uh devs working over at motive and doing different things um it's it's not you know it's okay uh, that's a pretty normal thing in fact it used to be normal to just lay off devs after you release the game uh pretty significantly and the fact that now instead of doing that they're sharing them within the the, the publisher to work on other games uh, and i believe and you can correct me if i'm wrong in the on youtube but i believe ea motive used to be a bioware studio um if i remember correctly so um it shouldn't be that surprising that they have a close relationship there 
Um, I think that there's something worth considering that, you know, maybe we didn't get much now uh, for this in seven day. It's worth considering that moving forward. And this has been confirmed in articles and stuff like that. They aren't, they're not planning on making DLC for Veilguard. And the next focus is all in on Mass Effect. They don't have, you know, Dragon Age is done. They will probably spin up a Dragon Age pre-production team soonish to start thinking about the next game that's really far away. Um, but they don't even have the Star Wars MMO anymore. They they just have Dragon Age and, and Mass Effect. So, uh, you know, and they've said it themselves, now the full focus will be on Mass Effect as uh, they, they finish up that pre-production uh, and then they move into full production. So um, I think it's very likely that we start getting dev blogs about Mass Effect uh, so that, you know, we'll probably factor into, you know, maybe we didn't get much info now, but they could definitely release a blog and, you know, the beginning of the year, middle of the year, really any time at this point uh, to just show us some stuff that they're working on or thinking about for the next game. Um, I believe in May is one of their big anniversaries. It's 20 or 25 years for Bioware. Um, I think that would probably be about the perfect timing for them to announce the pre uh, that pre-production has ended and they're in full production, which means that it won't just be the fairly small team doing pre-production anymore. But all of these people who just finished with Veilguard will now come on. Uh, all the environmental artists, the character artists, the animators, people doing mocap and voice acting, and all of that stuff will start ramping up as they start to develop the next game, which is Mass Effect. Uh, so I'm, I wouldn't be surprised at all if in the early year, um, maybe May. Uh, we would see some kind of announcement of, hey, we're in full production now. They did that with uh, the Veil Guard, um, and they actually did it about, I want to say it was six or seven months after they actually started full production. Um, so it's very possible that they are working on like significant parts of the game already that you know maybe they've already left pre-production or that they've done a pretty extensive pre-production uh, cycle so we'll just have to wait and see but um if you're bummed about not getting info for this 2024 and seven day i suspect uh we won't have to wait a whole year uh for 2025's and seven day to get any info um I, I did think it was notable that um at least i didn't see any articles or statements from people like Jeff Grubb or Tom Henderson, they tend to kind of be in the know when it comes to EA. Um, and like last year, they dropped their predictions on how far away the game uh, really is with Mass Effect. Um, one of them seeming more informed than the other, but who knows? Anything could happen. Um, yeah, I, I think that'll be interesting. Now, when it comes to N7 Day 2025, I would expect that one to be fairly significant. I, I, I would, you know, that you're going to be, you know, they're going to be months in the full production, you know, all of the stuff they did in pre-production, all of the concept art and prototypes and all that stuff there, there would surely be an, a decent amount of things that they could share with everybody, uh, to give us a little bit of hype. Um, Things like the subtitle and, and what they're going to call the game, who the characters are going to be, if Shepard's in it or not, when it's going to take place, all of those details are probably pretty far away. So even if we start getting more info about the game, I would be very patient with what they're actually going to give us because you have to really think about you know, what we knew about Veilguard before it came out. Um, which really wasn't that much. So they, they did a big blitz in the couple months before, but you know, that very well may mean that we don't get more, a, a significant amount of info about mass effect until 2027 or 2028. So try to buckle up and be ready for that. Moving over to talk a bit about Veilguard. I have finished my first playthrough of the dragon age game. Um, and I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about what um, I think that might mean for the next Mass Effect. Um, the The reception and sales of Veilguard are probably going to be pretty significant. I had um, dismissed quite a bit of the uh, talk I heard about, like, oh, Veilguard is you know Bioware's last chance. If if they if it doesn't sell well or if the reviews are bad or whatever, Bioware's done. Um, and I didn't really believe that because I, I really felt like if Bio, if Bioware was in that much trouble, they would have shut them down years ago at this point. Um, and them still being open and active made me believe that maybe Dragon Age wasn't that important. Now, 
I will say that personally myself and through other people, I've heard that that may not be the case, that, that uh, Veilguard may have been quite a big deal for, uh, for Bioware and, and, and it may have needed to succeed in order for them to be safe and for the next Mass Effect game to be safe. Um, luckily, uh, with a 80 plus Metacritic score and seemingly from what we've seen in Steam charts and stuff like that, it should be selling pretty well. I think that that issue is mostly resolved at this point. Um, but we also know that in recent history, just because the game scores well, or just because it sells well, or a lot of people are playing it or talking about it, it doesn't mean it's safe. So, uh, I have a lot of confidence that the next mass effect is going to happen and it's all good. Everything's cool that we, that we'll get the game one day. Um, and, and I think the reception uh, from real people and the sales that I'm expecting should have Bioware in a pretty good spot. Uh, though I will say that I, I suspect the expectations of Veilguard were realistic, that maybe they knew it wasn't going to sell 20 million copies uh, after it had this kind of tumultuous development. It's not their biggest brand e either. Um, that there's a probably a, hopefully a realistic expectation of what this game is going to be, but I also think it's a pretty big deal. So, um, hopefully this is a good thing for them. Um, things about the Dragon Age, the Veil Guard, I want to see carried over. Um, I obviously the visuals and stuff like that. Now we are under the impression the next mass effect will be on unreal engine where uh veil guard is on, uh, frostbite. Uh, which is an engine that's shared amongst a lot of EA publisher or, or studios. Now, um, it started off as dice with battlefield and they've now they use it for everything, including like FIFA in the sports games. Um, but just in general, the idea of like, you know, having those improved graphics and things like that, um, the conversations and stuff to a point, um, I still like how there was a very clear distinction of whether or not you were trying to befriend a companion or like romance them. I, I felt like that was nice. Um, the, the dialogue system in, in Veil Guard is very much, um, uh, Mass Effect Andromeda. It's got that similar vibe to it. Um, or at least the, the mechanics of it. Um, I would really, I, I love the idea of the smaller of, of multiple smaller world states, uh, or, or environments. Um, we, we really don't need to do the Andromeda thing. We definitely don't need to do the Starfield thing and try to have a hundred planets with unique biomes and, and all of that. Um, you know, make a handful of hub locations and then have missions that, that play off of those areas. That's, that's what I want. Uh, I, I think that's good for multiple reasons. I think that that goes back to that trilogy style of gameplay and, and, and the way things work there. It also puts you in a position to, you know, make this game relatively quickly. Instead of trying to make a few gigantic open world locations, you, you make, you know, a few more smaller locations that act as hubs, and then you can make a bunch of missions that spawn off of that. Um, I, I just, I suspect that they're going to try to get Mass Effect out pretty quickly. I suspect Veilguard was very expensive and will probably struggle to make its money back. Uh, I suspect the next Mass Effect is going to be the game where EA is like, okay, now make that thing and it better make us money. Don't take eight years. Don't switch the genre that you want it to be multiple times, have a vision and execute it and get it out quick. That's why when I've seen people say that they don't think the next mass effect is till 2029 or 2030, I just don't think Bioware is going to be allowed to take that long. So for better or worse, I think that we'll see the next mass effect game come out before then, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, things I definitely don't want to see. There was still just a lot of like lingering Bioware stuff in this and just some kind of like, when they first started making this game, things that probably didn't bother people, but now they kind of do. Like one thing I always noted was that um, I didn't like that in cities or in the home base, you know, everyone just kind of stood in their spot. Uh, maybe there were some NPCs walking short distances, but you just don't feel like you're in like a living, breathing world. Um, that said, there's things about Veilguard that make me believe that's not what they were going for. So maybe that's okay. Maybe, you know, they, they, they weren't trying to do that. Uh, so, 
So they didn't, um, like having healing pots everywhere. Uh, aesthetically, it makes no sense. But from a gameplay perspective, it does. So I try. I'm I'm, I'm trying to give them the benefit there that uh, that that they were doing this on purpose. Um, as for the future, you know, for for Veilguard, without spoilers, there's definitely heavy insinuation that there's more Dragon Age coming. Um, like I said before, we know from some recent interviews that they are not doing DLC for Veilguard. That and that they're moving in all in on Mass Effect. So um, we probably haven't really seen this before. Even with Veilguard, I suspect the Mass Effect support is going to be truly all in with the whole studio. And uh, hopefully that's a good thing. Uh, there's a lot of good leadership, it seems, on that Mass Effect team. Um, and hopefully they've spent these last four or five years building the scaffolding with pre-production uh, to allow all these artists and people to come in and fill in all the blanks and, and make this new game. Um, as for Bioware in general, I, I feel pretty good about them uh, with the reception of the game being really, really good, uh, as well as the sales appearing to be good. Um, if you're eternally online like myself, it may be easy to like argue like, well, actually, the uh, reception of this game was bad because uh, everyone hates it for being woke or whatever. I, I don't think that's a very many people. I think it's a small number of very loud people. I think most people are are just playing the game and having fun, uh, which is how it should be. So um, please don't let the echo chambers that you're in uh, with all these weirdos who are trying to grift money out of you, uh, you know, being bad content creators and making the laziest videos they can make. Um, please don't let them sway you into thinking that people don't like this game, that people don't like Veilgard. They, they obviously do. And um, every time I make a video that has anything to do with Bioware or Mass Effect or Dragon Age, uh, you know, two thirds of the comments, you know, uh, of my fairly small number of comments are people just being like, oh, it's going to be ruined by wokeness. And my main response is, I hope, I, I don't really hope this, but I, I passive aggressively hope it's just the wokest game that's ever woked and that they're, and that you're going to hate it because it's so diverse. Um, I don't really want that. I want people to be represented. I, I'm cool with the messages they're trying to push for the most part. I hope they're a little more tactical about it than they were in parts of the, of, the, of Veil Guard. Some of it was a little uh, on the nose uh, and a little bit cringy to me. Um, but I still appreciate that they're trying to represent people who aren't represented very often, uh, even if it means a bunch of losers get mad about it. So uh, we'll have to wait and see with what, what comes, though. Um, I, I think seeing blogs popping up for Mass Effect sooner than later would make everyone feel a little more uh, secure about what's coming. Uh, for some bips and uh, bobs of other uh, stories here, um, I, I put out a tweet the other day that was like, the one thing I have to have in the next Mass Effect is at least one scene, maybe it's a nostalgia scene for Shepard or for the trilogy or Maybe uh, we go into a planet and we see a, a statue of Shepard and the rest of the crew. And I want Vigil to play and I want to weep like a baby. So that's my that's my big requirement. A lot of people uh, seem to appreciate that. Um, I was going to talk about my theories for the story and stuff. I, I just throw my hands up. I, I have no idea. I, I had so many ideas last year before that in seven day. But between the Andromeda references and the lead up of those videos being released, as well as, you know, kind of the, the, the picture on the belly of the N7 and that poster that Gamble posted, I, I just I, I don't have anything. I still don't. Uh, I need I'll need a little bit more info to be able to come up with some kind of speculation. So uh, until then, I'll still just hope that I'm getting sweet, precious Shepherd back and. Uh, I'll, I'll get to play with uh, the Tally still alive somewhere. She's been cryogenically frozen and uh, that maybe we'll see our crew once again, but we will have to wait and see. Uh, EA's CEO, Andrew Wilson, is possibly being tapped to be the new CEO of Disney. Um, that would be pretty interesting. Andrew Wilson's been at EA for a long time, um, was there during the time where they move their focus completely over to multiplayer live action games and all that. Uh, I can't remember if it was him or someone under him who said, you know, that like single player games are dead, that there's no reason to make them anymore. Luckily, and EA is one of the leaders in this, 
that has come back around and there's plenty of single player games being made uh, nowadays, especially by EA. Um, so him leaving would be interesting. It can be a mixed bag, right? Um, I'm actually dealing with at my own job. Uh, our CEO is leaving in the next six months and there's kind of weird vibes, right? Cause you don't know. Um, I've been at my job for over a decade and uh, he's been, my CEO has been there the whole time. And I know things are going to change when they bring in someone else. They could bring in someone who's going to change, uh, you know, work from home policies. Uh, we'll change the bonus that we get every year or that we have gotten every year. Uh, we'll, we could change caseloads and work schedules and all that. We, we have no idea. Um, and it could be good or bad, right? And so the idea of, uh, of Wilson leaving EA, you know, obviously the skill ups and the other people, uh, the, the, the big talkers in the industry are going to celebrate and be happy, but it really depends on who they replace them with. So it, it, it can always be worse as we've learned here in the U S uh, recently. Um, there's also a new Bioware career website. Apparently this was an EA wide thing. Uh, they, they kind of revamped their hiring website with all their job listings. Um, I suspect we'll see a blitz of hiring probably early 2025 from BioWare um, as they it's it's just assumed that a bunch of people who worked on Veilguard are probably going to leave. They're probably going to leave BioWare. Whether they've been there for a decade or for a few years or whatever, it's completely normal for when a big game comes out for people who were kind of one foot out the door to take the other foot. Um, and that's okay. Uh, so between people who are probably going to leave as well as people who they're going to need to bring in to make a new game, um, I, I'll be keeping an eye on, on this new, uh, on, on this new, uh, hiring website for Bioware to see, uh, you know, if we can suss anything out. Um, uh, that's about it. Uh, this isn't the longest podcast that there wasn't a whole lot to go over this year. Um, we do plan on doing a, a, one of these podcasts with N7 legend. I think we're going to wait probably until December. Um, I'm waiting for him to finish the veil guard and we'll have kind of another discussion about like, what did we think of veil guard? How do we think it impacts the future of Bioware and what does it mean for the next mass effect? And then he and I can talk about in seven days as well, a little bit. There's, just not much to talk about. So uh, be on the lookout for that. He or I or both of us will announce that when it's coming closer to actually being a thing. And uh, that that's, that's where I'm going to wrap it up. If you have any of your own topics, questions, or feedback, uh, be sure to let me know in my Discord, in the YouTube comments, or hit me up on social media as at Bond Diesel or at The Bonfire. That's the name of my other podcast. Thank you so much for listening to this episode and please consider supporting via the links in the show description. That is all I have for this episode of the mass effect hypecast. So until next time.